So this video is a little long. So to help you guys out, click on the link that's going to be popping up in the upper right. That little card there is going to show you how you could speed through to get to the good parts. Enjoy! Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? So, today is a promise video that I said I was going to have to make because I got a new palette and a whole lot of new colors. So, like, new colors. So, when you get a new palette and you get some new colors, there's kind of some things that you need to do. I actually got 20... Six colors my palette holds 20 so I have six that I had to leave out of which is okay because there's some colors I don't need to use so I have a whole lot of colors here and my brush and here's my new palette and so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put these two paints these are all Windsor and Newton. I'm gonna put these two paints in my palette. And I think I've got a big old shade going across right now because my phone is creating a shadow. Huh, I don't think I like that. So I'm gonna to have to figure out what to do about that. Okay, I think I fixed that. So I had to move my light. And you may end up seeing it, I'm not sure. But as you can see, these are all the colors that I'm going to use in my new palette. Um, you have to decide if you have a limited palette what colors you're going to want to put in there. And technically you really could get away with having all only just your primary colors. So you know your red, your yellow, your blue. Because all other colors basically are made from that. You can make brown from the combination of colors. You can make black from a combination of colors if you're not careful. When you're watercoloring, you actually get a lot of bright browns and like muddy colors. So you have to be really careful how you mix your colors. So I like color. So as you can see, I got Windsor and Newton. Um, these are just the fine watercolors. These are not the professional. Now there was a few that I really wanted to get um, and they are professional. So lamp black was one and I like lamp black because it bleeds just phenomenal and I'll I'll show that to you in an example and then I also got opera rose because it is just a vibrant beautiful pink so from here we're gonna go to prepping my palette so when you get a new palette that's plastic it's very shiny it's very slick and it really doesn't help your paints. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's use a little, we'll use a little bit of that opera pink, but just a touch, because I really put a touch here and then I'll add some water to it. And you'll see what I mean when I mix this water with it is in on my shot. There we go. So let's go ahead and get that all woken up. See how that beads? When you're trying to blend colors and you're having that beading, that's not what you want. You want a nice, be able to spread it and have a nice smooth blend. So there's lots of different ways to do it. What I found for me works the best is a magic eraser. So I'm gonna magic eraser and excuse the horrible noise. It's a horrible noise and my phone is shaking. So.
You can use that. People use Brilla pads. I'm gonna wipe it off, off camera. And let's see how the magic eraser now does for the same thing. So let me go ahead and pick up some of this. You can already see, you don't get the big beading going on. Let me mix. with a little lemon yellow. But now you can see what I mean. It gives you a much, you'll have a little bit of the beading and as your brush uses it, it will naturally scratch it up a little bit, but you can see the difference. I have a little bit of dry paint in there, but you can see the difference in how that would, was blending versus having just the undone the untreated. So when you prep your palette, you wanna make sure you go and you do that for all of your mixing wells. And you could even do it in your um, little pot areas because that will also help when you bring the, the paint out and it'll help that paint adhere to those wells. Okay, I spared you guys having to listen to the squeaky, squeaky, squeaky of having to get this all prepped, but I have prepped it all. I'll go back and I'll do this one with the opera rose later. But some pretty cool features of this palette is it does have a thumb hole. So, you know, I can paint outside. It actually goes for it to go the other way around, but there we go. I can paint outside, which is pretty cool. It also has, I don't know if my brush will fit in it, but it has a brush holder. So if you're outside painting and you want to have a variety of brushes, you could have them there so pretty cool another thing when you have a new palette is to arrange how you want your colors and this is a preference for everybody um, for me I'm gonna go kind of in a rainbow and I'm gonna it'll end up being where my darker colors are gonna be at the end which is fine it's kind of how I like to paint so you're gonna see me now I'm gonna kind of organize all my colors on my palette. All right, so this is how I have decided to arrange my colors. And you know, just because you do it this way for this palette doesn't mean that you can't change it for your next one. That's kind of how I have it laid out. There's my colors. So we're gonna start, I'm gonna start over here, with this far one. We're gonna do crimson. And I always start with the corners and I did prep my pad, my little pans here. And I'm not filling it all the way, I want a good Good dollop. Oh, that's just a, that's such a beautiful color. And then this next one we're gonna do is Brilliant Red. It's got a little bit more of an orangey turn. The crimson kind of has a more of a purple, the blue. Hint, um, the brilliant red is more of a, an orangey. It's got more of a yellow, sunny red. The next one is Rose Matter. And I will use a toothpick to make sure I get it up in those corners. These are slant wells, which is really good for capturing the paint. Then we're going to go with this. I just absolutely love it. You guys are going to think it's bright, but I love this pink. For florals, it dilutes down and makes such a, a beautiful wash of color. 
that one. And I'm keeping them in order because I'm actually, oh, sorry about that. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna swatch these. Oh, look at this vermilion. Isn't it just gorgeous? Such a deep, deep orange. And there was a little right, little reasoning with this. Um, I wanted to go from darkers to lighter. So in the same colors, now this one, I probably need to go ahead and mix a little bit. It's settled, occasionally it will settle in the tube. So let me go ahead and get a toothpick out. I will stir that up a little bit in there. And then I'll mix up that tube. So let me just mix up that pigment and with the binding agencies, get that all nice and in there. Perfect. See, that was much better. And I, what you should do is you should actually mix up your tubes a little bit before. And I didn't. There's a little burnt sienna. my last two colors yellow ochre I love yellow ochre so when you get new tubes and they've been shipping and you don't know how long they've been sitting I would recommend giving them a little squeeze now this is definitely more of an opaque beautiful mustardy yellow my next one will be medium yellow. It's a little bit of a darker yellow, but beautiful. And we have lemon yellow. Look at that beautiful bright yellow. Awesome. Now to mix these or to get them into the corners, um, I just wiped off that orange. You can use a metal pick, which actually works out really well because it, it lets you just wipe it off a little bit cleaner than a toothpick. But I like to get in here and you wanna make sure you get that color all the way down in those corners. I'm just wiping it off right now. Get it down in the corners, spread it out. Helps get those little air bubbles that are down there out. Gives you a prettier looking pan colors. It also helps you kind of look at the consistency. So if these are as a new brand of colors for you, a new brand of paint, doing this helps you kind of see, is this a thick consistency? Is this a thinner consistency? Does it look a little more opaque? Give you a little bit more of idea of the paint that you're working with. But you can see just by pushing on it and kind of messing it with it down and smushing it around, it really helps it to lay down in those wells. Oh, I love this color. It is brilliantly pink very concentrated and this is actually the professional grade of Windsor Newton so highly pigmented so beautiful okay, we're gonna get down we're down here to rose matter which is another one that's 
for florals. It's just a, a great one. But you can almost see, as soon as I start to touch it, how it just smooths out. Oh, it's just, it's yummy. I think that toothpick has had it. So I'm gonna pop out another one. Toothpicks are cheap, inexpensive ways to do this. Now we're at that brilliant red. And it really does have kind of an orangey tinge to it. Wipe that off. And crimson. Get it down in those corners, working it in the edges. And just kind of smoothing it out. Oh, pretty. Trying off that toothpick really, really well. All right, we're gonna go to this lemon yellow. Lemon yellow seems a little thicker. but it's smoothing out. It's so pretty. All right, so there is, I'm gonna bring you in for a close up of those colors. Isn't they beautiful? Just amazingly beautiful colors. this down so we can see our other ones. We start over here, sap green is a color that I use a lot for leaves. I mix it with other colors. So I'll mix it with a little lemon yellow if I want to lighten it. Um, it's also good mixed down if you want to mix it with a little blue. Deepens it a little bit. If you want to make it a little more earthy, you'll mix it with a contrasting or, or, or a complementary color. So I would mix that green perhaps with a little tiny touch of a red or an orange, and that would definitely make it a little bit more earthy. That's sap green. Blue Lake. Blue Lake is one that I have not used before. So I'm really curious, it almost looks dark like an indigo it's beautiful I'm looking forward to playing with that and the next one is gonna be ultramarine ultramarine I use a lot looks very similar to that blue lake so when I swatch these out It'll be interesting to see how they look. Phalo Blue, I do use this one a lot too. So I like blues. I don't have my Cerulean. Cerulean is another one that I use a lot of, but it did not come in the Winsor Newton pack that I got. So I do have Cerulean in another brand that if I need to, I will use it. Cerulean is great for skies. This is magenta, and magenta, I was torn about where to stick it, and I don't use magenta a whole lot. And I went ahead and I stuck it over on the purple side because most of the time when I use magenta, I'm mixing it with a violet or a blue and just changing that shade slightly. So I thought it made more sense to put it on this side with the blues and the violets versus over with the reds and the oranges. But again, this isn't a, there's no right or wrong. You do whatever you make sense for you and how you mix. This one's violet and it's a pretty violet. I have used that violet before. Now we're gonna go into kind of our more earthy. I mean, we, we already have yellow ochre and burnt sienna 
over on the other side, very earthy. Um, medium yellow kind of also has that very earthy feel. We're gonna do some raw umber. And these colors actually came out without looking too separated. So I'm glad because I didn't do any mixing. I just went right into it. I'm gonna do some burnt umber. And these are great to just add a little warmth to colors. Here's Payne's Gray. And Payne's Gray, um, you can either have a Payne's Gray that leans more towards the red or one that goes more towards the blue. And I think going towards the blue is more common. And Windsor & Newton, this Payne's Gray definitely goes more towards the blue. And then here is my Lamp Black. And I don't use black a lot, but if I have to use a black and I really want a true black, this is a very good black. And I'm not putting much out on there because, again, that will last me a long time. And I think you can see all those colors. And I'm just going to go in and smooth those out. Move my water jar over here so I can get to my paper towel. There we go. Smoothing it into the corners. I have a better camera um, set up on the way. So right now I apologize for the shakiness. I have I'm I'm working in an RV. It's hence the back roads art studio. I'm in an RV. And I'm on a little card table. And that's actually where my cell phone camera is attached to. So when I'm trying to touch the table, it's shaking the camera because it's on a very kind of wobbly setup. It's getting there. Slowly working on ways to make this a much better experience for you guys. colors all situated now. They're so pretty. I love to see how they react as I'm smoothing them. This one right here, you can see it's a very thick, but it's starting to wiggle out and smooth down, but it's a, it's a much thicker, which makes me think it's going to be a little bit more pigmented, a little more concentrated. There we go, it's smoothed down. So you need to know that when you're painting, and that's another reason why swatching them is going to be important. So anytime you get new colors or a new brand, um, even if you're used to the same colors, but you, let's say you switch it out and these are Windsor Newton, but if I got Daniel Smith, which are, is a totally another brand, their raw umber might be different than the raw umber I'm using now. Payne's Gray will be different. And the only way for you to really know that is by getting in there and playing with them, swatching them, and seeing how they react. Some of them are going to be a little more transparent, some will be a little more opaque, even for a watercolor. All right, we're going to get to this lamp black. Got that one all done. Let's smooth him all out. All right, so there's the colors. We got all both palettes, both sides full. So I have 20 colors. So the next step is to let these dry out. I could go ahead and swatch them right now, but I think I wanna let them dry out a little bit. 
and then we'll swatch that. Okay, so as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to swatch all these colors. I am doing it fast here for you. Feel free to, to go back and slow this down if you wanted to kind of see a slower version of it. But I figured I wouldn't bore, bore you with just swatching away. Enjoy! I really love the blue selections here. Um, they were so vibrant. I knew when I was putting them in the pan how beautiful they looked, but then once they dried and I was able to actually swatch them, I was really impressed. I cannot wait to use these colors. Wait, who am I fooling? I have already used these colors, and they are absolutely stunning. So here we go with that paints gray and you can see that's really a pretty gray color. Now we're going to do that lamp black and see how dark and just absolutely intense black that is. Now you're going to see, I'm going to show you how that color bleeds and why I absolutely love lamp black. Look at that, it kind of feathers and blooms and I can imagine using this for fur for anything where I need that kind of fuzzy look gorgeous and then I just had to have some fun playing with the the paints because you know paints are for painting and here's the close-up of all those amazing colors swatched and dry now, what's your favorite there's those blues. I mean, they are just gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And yellows and the magenta and violet. I love them all.